G'day, in the brewery, Sunday Arvo. I've got a package during the week, I haven't opened it yet. I did pay for this, this is not sponsored or anything like that, this come out of my pocket. We'll have a look. I always get good packaging from Kegland, I'll tell you that much. All right. Wart Whipper, that's what we're interested in today. That's what we're gonna have a look at. In here is some scales. We'll do that video at another date. I'll open it up anyway. G'day. As I'm sitting here editing the video for the stir plate, I remembered something I forgot to mention. Uh, lots of people have asked me oh, for years and years about the little clamps I use. Now, I have not been able to get the exact clamps you've seen in all my old videos with the T-bar at the top. There's a few places around that sell them with a little thumb screw and it really hurts your fingers because it's really small. I managed to find these ones. It's a bit bigger at the top. Still hurts your fingers a bit if your fingers are wet, <laughs> but it's much easier to handle. So I've whacked them on eBay. Uh, that's $8 for two plus postage. So, you know, I've got to just, I, I, I bought a heap in from overseas, not a heap, <laughs> a small amount, but uh, yeah. So I just thought I could help people out yell out. I'll leave the link down below in the description uh, to the eBay. If you want to have a look, they're not quite as like stainless and as thick as the one, the original one I used, but I've used it in brewing um, and it's fine. So that's why I've included two as well. I've made it cheap and included two. So if one's break, I don't think it'll break though. You'd have to be uh, pretty hard on it to break it. But just in case, that's why I've included two. All right, cheers, back to the video. Oh, before I go, <laughs> some people were saying um, the XPA looked dark, uh, that the lighting's not doing it any favors in here too, but no, it's not dark at all. It is, if I get out of the, I'm always got black clothes on or red clothes behind it, you know what I mean? It doesn't help. There you go, not dark at all. Cheers. These scales were going to be part of the video, but they're out of stock. They've sold out already, so we'll leave that for another time. What's the point if you can't buy it? But this is what I'm really interested in. It's a little stir plate. I do have my old clunker. This one, which you've probably seen in a few videos when I do use it. I've always been worried about the flask falling off this top, because it's sometimes it can get a bit of a wobble up, you know, what you once you're going and I've, I've always sort of put in the corner of the fridge and sort of made it so if it falls off it's going to fall into the corner and the flask won't fall off. Um, I've been going to build braces and all sorts of things but um, it hasn't happened yet and I think I'll keep this but I'm going it has got a these ones uh, this one anyway has got a heater in it as well but uh, you need a temperature controller on it uh, which you can't sort of really do um, but that's another project which I'm going to do soon. Um, so it's been sort of useless, that heat. I did accidentally knock it on one time uh, and you'll cook your yeast starter and I did cook mine. Although I noticed um, before it got too bad that time. Magic, there you go, there's a flask. If you don't have a size, that's a three litre flask. I've got about uh, nearly two litres of water in there. But what I meant, I don't know if you'll see it. See how it's a rather small base and this, as I said, is not always level. It'd be kind of better if these things had three feet on the bottom rather than four. Um, but it's always worked and it has never fell off. I should say that, but it hasn't fallen off, but I've always been worried about it. Um, and that's why I said I was going to build a, a bracket or something to hold it, but I haven't. Now, I haven't seen one of these in real life yet. I don't know, but apparently in the photos, they have a three litre flask on it. So we'll have a look. I don't think you need a close up of this. Oh, they do give you a stir bar. That looks like about an inch. Uh, I could be wrong. Now my one's a little bit longer. That's what I say to everybody. Um, I think that's a 30 mil and this might be an inch. It's a bit of a guess there. And it comes with a power adapter because it runs on five volts 
and a little stir plate. Now it is tiny. Sorry, keep getting interrupted with power tools. It's the weekend. People are doing their garden. So yeah, it is tiny, lightweight. And what I was going to say was, why don't you build your own out of a computer fan? I bought a computer fan years ago. I mean, I've had that other one. Oh, I couldn't even tell you how long, way before Kegland was around. And I bought the parts and I've got an old hard drive that's actually still sitting over there to get the magnets out of. But it's just, a by the time you buy everything and all the time you put in it, it's, you may as well just buy one and then you don't have to worry. It's all about balancing it and yeah, <laughs> I'd really suggest buying one. Um, because mucking around, trying to find the right container, the right um, fan, and the, getting the magnets in the right spot isn't always that easy. But if you've got the time and you're a tinkerer, go ahead. Let's plug her in. I'll just make sure she's turned off. Yep. All right, I'll put, this is the one that came with it I'll use. So always try and slide them down the edge rather than dropping them in. When you're putting it on, you'll, you won't be able to see it more likely when it's full of wort. But you can usually hear when the magnet, you know, attaches to the other magnet or gets attracted by the other magnet and then move it so it's sitting in the center. Now that already feels more stable. Those little rubber grip things is keeping it from sliding. I can't sort of push it or anything. When I do push it, it's pushing the whole, the whole unit, which is good. Now we'll try and get this started up. I might take a film from this way. Well, it's definitely going and that, that's full bore there at the moment, but you really don't need it that high. <laughs> when you're doing a starter, you just need it so it's like that. You just need it so the surface is moving. And when the surface is moving, oxygen has been taken in and things are moving around. Uh, especially when you've got yeast and that in there, you can see the yeast and that moving as well at the moment, of course. We only have water. It's a little bit harder to see what's going on. But just that is all you need for a starter. That's plenty. While we're here, you don't need a airlock, just a piece of foil like that, it's fine. That way air can still get in, nasties can't fall in, and that's what you want. So that's easily got enough power, if I you know, had three litres in that. They do say on the website or instructions that you can use a five litre flask if you like. So I'm quite happy with that. I'd be much more confident leaving that sitting anywhere really, because that is gripped on there, where on the other one it wasn't. I was always worried about it. Now there's only a few other things. There's no point going on about this video. It works. <laughs> it works and that's all that matters. And that's what I was worried about, how slippery it was. And it's more likely yeah, to stay on the, yeah. It's not gonna slide off. 
I'll give you a few little tips though. I won't go right into it. I do have a starter video that I've been making for about 10 years that'll eventually get out. I keep going, oh, I'll re-record it, I'll re-record it. So that is coming. But uh, there's a few things you're going to need besides a flask and everything else that comes with the kit, the stir bar and the stir plate. A big funnel like that is really handy. You've seen this sitting behind me and that's because I use it all the time. I use it all the time. Not just for starters, for filling up my fermenters and things. These things will be discussed more in the starter video when I eventually get it up. But if you have one for the first time and these buy a proper flask, don't buy a cheap one, buy a, a proper flask. Uh, you can get them at Kegland. Uh, otherwise they can break. These can go virtually straight from the gas stove and I always give it a minute or two, but they can virtually go straight from the gas stove into your cold water for cooling. So you can boil it on the stove and then I just put it in the sink with some cold water and it doesn't take long to get down to, to uh, temperature to pitch your yeast. Doesn't matter what yeast you're using, lager or ale, around 19, 20 degrees is perfect. But if it's the first time you're using one of these and you have your light dry malt, or even if it's fresh wort and you're boiling that on the stove, and you, even if you're watching it, um, once that starts to boil, it's going to overflow. There's nothing you can do about it. You can sit there like an eagle <laughs> watching it, and as soon as that starts to bubble up and boil, even when you turn off the heat, it's usually too late, and you'll end up with hot, sticky wort everywhere all over your, all over your stove, and it's a mess, you, and your wife won't like you even more than she probably doesn't now. <laughs> but, <laughs> true story. Uh, so what I always do, a saucepan. I boil it in a saucepan. Boil it up, mix it up, it's easier. I mean, you can't mix it up in there anyway. You can't get a spoon in there. You do it in a saucepan, nice clean saucepan, of course. And then you use your funnel. You pour it in there. Again, go slow. Even though these have a, an air pocket thing where the air can get in as you're pouring, if you just pour it in like that because it's a nice big funnel, it's gonna spurt up and go all over the roof. You need to pour it in slowly, even through the funnel. Um, be, the bean there, done that more than once. <laughs> you pour it slow. Sometimes you forget, you know, oh, I'll get, get that in there, and pff, it's like everywhere. Firm cap, buy some firm cap. Uh, there's a lot of shops I see that don't have it. I'm not even sure Kegland has it. But any shop that doesn't have it <laughs> needs thinking about, because it's so handy. It's handy for you uh, when you're making beer itself. It's handy, when, really, really handy when you're making a starter. If you've got firm cap, that really stops that foaming problem. Even though still, I still start in a saucepan before I transfer it into here. Uh, I, you know, I'll boil it for maybe five, 10 minutes in a saucepan, goes in here. Once it's in there, I just whack it back on the stove, bring it back to the boil. That way you get steam all up here and that, that you know, sanitizes everything. You don't have to worry. I have a little bit of a, once it's that, aluminium foil goes on your steam's going to sanitize the aluminium foil everything's right and you're ready to go straight into the sink to cool down so what i'm going to do today i'm going to give away a flask and a stir plate the flask you can choose between the three liter i think they might have a one liter and a three liter you can choose what size i'd go with the three liter myself this isn't free from kegland this is coming out of my pocket as did these <laughs> uh, i've had this for years uh, again, this flask was from before uh, Keglam were around. This, this is an old flask. So, you know, I'm talking six, seven years old. If you look after them, they last forever. And this has been off the gas, hot off the gas, into cold water, I don't know how many times. How do you clean them? I just fill it up with hot water out of the tap and whack some sodium bicarbonate in there. And I've got a video about that too. It just cleans it up straight away. 10 minutes and it's done. Now I have to apologize to overseas people. I was going to organize one for America and the UK, Europe sort of thing, but I haven't been able to do it. Um, I haven't been able to find these. I thought these might be at more beer in the US. I haven't, I just did a quick search and they're not there at the moment. So I can't get one of those to you, unfortunately. So unfortunately this competition is only for Australia this time. There's one coming up in the future that I'm trying to get sponsors for all around the world. Uh, but this one's out of my pocket and I can't seem to find these anywhere at the moment except for Australia. If that changes in the next week or so before I finish the competition, maybe I'll be able to do it. But uh, unfortunately at the moment, that, you know, I can only post these in Australia and I'll buy them from Kegland and, and send them to you. So there's not much you have to do. Comment on this video, like this video, 
I'll leave a link below. And it's much easier for me if I send you to the Homebrew Network or the Cellar Dweller site. It's the same thing. Both links take you to the same place. And I'll, I'll start a thread and you can put your details in there. It's just easier for me than YouTube because in YouTube there'll be people commenting that don't want to win, you know, that they're just saying g'day and things like that or talking or want to ask questions about it. Whereas if you go through the link to the forum, uh, you know, that takes a little bit more effort. So if you want to go in the competition, you're going to have to take that little bit more effort. Uh, it just makes it easier for me. The winner will be randomly drawn. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure if I can do the, the, so far at the moment, I can't do the USA one. But if that changes, uh, I'll let you know. And maybe if you're really keen, you can just go to a uh, seller dweller site and leave a comment in that, but put that you're in the USA next to it. That way I'll know to keep it separate. And I might be able to figure out something else. So that's it, quick short video for today. If you're interested in getting into starters, which I suggest you do, if you're gonna start using liquid yeasts, or harvesting and drying your quike yeasts, or whatever you wanna use it for, go on the competition and you could win one. I apologize to the USA people, as I've said probably three times now, but there's nothing I can do at this moment. If I see them come up on more beer in the next few weeks, I'll be able to include you into the prizes. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, share this around your groups. I don't mind who goes in the competition that's fine as long as you go like this video subscribe to this video and go to cellar dweller because the cellar dweller one's the important one but i'll check up and make sure everything else is done and the winner will be randomly chosen uh, in about two weeks two weeks should be enough time so i'm not sure what the date is power tools just went off again uh, there it is again all right that's enough thank you thanks for watching thanks to my patrons like subscribe share all that stuff get in you might win a flask and a stir plate cheers